the right time in Honolulu. Jacob, thank you very much. Also joining us now from Honolulu is Hawaii State Representative Matthew Lopresti. He's, he is vice chair of the Hawaii House Committee on Public Safety. Um, thank you very much for being here, Congressman. Uh, talk to me about uh, what it was like during those 38 minutes. Uh, you told our producers that, that you took your family and hid in a bathtub. Yeah, it was a completely surreal experience. You know, we, we've always been prepared for natural disasters. And uh, when we got the alerts, my wife and I gathered our children and, and went to the innermost room in our house. And we put them in the bathtub um, because we don't have basements out here. So we put them in there, told them to say their prayers because as far as we knew, there was an imminent strike happening. Uh, what, why did it take so long to correct the error? You know, we're going to have a hearing this coming week. I'm the vice chair of the Public Safety Committee, and we're going to have a lot of questions. We want a second-by-second -second analysis to what happened and why. Uh, it seems that they did not even have an error alert drafted to send out, uh, which is kind of crazy not to have the assumption that something could go wrong. Um, and then apparently they had to run the message by FEMA in order to send it out to everybody that it was a false alarm. It's not acceptable. They need to act faster. I mean, it seems like the, the, first, um, the first word that anybody got that this was not real, that this was a false alarm, was, was a tweet by, by Tulsi Gabbard. How is that an acceptable way to go about things? No, it's not. I mean, our first word was because a cousin of ours is in the Air Force, and uh, we got word from him and my sister-in-law, who's a cyber expert, that it was a false alarm. And then we pushed that message out through social media, too. But you're right, 38 minutes is when the State uh, Department of Emergency Management really got things out. And it's not okay. But I, I'd like to talk a little bit about what the president said, Go saying ahead. he wanted to offer his support. You know. We're in this situation in part because of his inflammatory rhetoric. He had Scaramucci just on talking about style and, style and content. His style is married to his content. His style is one of disdain for our enemies and our allies alike, and the content is offensive. If he knew even the most remotely basic thing about diplomacy, you know, people wouldn't be so frightened to begin with and planning for these kind of eventualities. But because of the style of leadership that we have, we have to plan for these things. And we lack the resources to have, obviously, the proper experts in charge to put these court of systems in place. And now we end up in this kind of situation. You know, I'm not saying that this, this false alarm is his fault, but the fact is his rhetoric of fire and fury has put the entire nation, if not the world, in a tizzy. And now we're in this kind of situation where the least bit of false alarm makes people hide in their bathtubs with their kids and, and say their prayers. Do you think anybody is telling the president that maybe he needs to dial it back and you're scaring Americans? Is anyone in his administration able to do that? Obviously not. I mean, I think there's a special place in hell for people like Scaramucci who go on TV and t make their life's work to apologize for this man rather than speak to him directly and say, you need to think more clearly and have a more rational approach to the world that we live in because you're putting people like my life and my children's life in danger. So you and don't it's appreciate okay. these New York style flourishes, as Scaramucci would call them? I don't think anybody in New York even appreciates it. Hawaii State Representative Matthew Lopresti, thank you very much for being here. I'm glad everything turned out okay. Thanks. A growing